Good morning, everyone, and good day for those people following online. Uh, my name is Denis Susar. I am coming from the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Uh, I'll be the moderator for this session. The session uh, entitled Beyond Universality, the Meaningful Con Connectivity Imperative. The objective of this session is to inform the audience how universal and meaningful connectivity is defined, how it can help reaching underserved communities, which are some of the targets and baseline indicators needed to assess where a country stands, and the importance of including the concept, of con including the concept in national policy plans. The session will aim to answer two policy questions. One, how can governments and stakeholders ensure universal and meaningful digital connectivity for all people, particularly those in underserved and marginalized communities? And two, how can policymakers establish robust measurement frameworks and indicators to accurately assess the progress, impact, and effectiveness of initiatives aimed at achieving universal and meaningful digital connectivity? We have a great panel today uh, that will give us the perspectives from very diverse, diverse countries, namely Lithuania, Brazil, Bangladesh, uh, and we will also hear from the European Commission how they partner with other parts of the world. Before introducing the panel, I would like to first give the floor to ITU, which is organizing this workshop. We will first hear a recorded message from Do Dr. Kozmas uh, Zavazava, the director of the ITU Telecommunication Development Bureau. After his message, uh, Mr. Martin Shepard on my right, senior ICT analyst in the ICT Data and Analytics Division, will give a short introduction to the project on promoting and, me uh, and measuring universal and meaningful connectivity. Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Denise. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, also on behalf of the ITU, good morning here in the room, good morning uh, online. Um, as Denise has mentioned, uh, I would like to start uh, with a small video of our director, Dr. Cosmas Savazava, who, will, who would like to uh, say a few words to the audience. Can we have video number one, please? <laughs> Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you all at this Internet Governance Forum workshop on universal and meaningful connectivity. I'm not able to join you in person today, but I'm confident that this session will be very productive given the caliber of the speakers before us. We have a common goal here, to enhance the Internet experience for those already connected, to make it accessible to the 2.6 billion people that are still offline. Our goal is to get everyone connected and enjoy the benefits of meaningful connectivity. We are committed to universal and sustainable digital transformation through our initiatives, research, technical assistance, and the tools. Undoubtedly, we can do more working together. Our work at ITU is enabled through partnerships and collaboration. One of the key partnerships of interest to you is the one we recently forged with the European Union. Through this partnership, we aim to adopt holistic approaches that help enhance the statistical capacity of countries to measure multiple aspects of meaningful connectivity. On this note, I call upon all to work with us to make universal and meaningful connectivity a reality. I wish you successful deliberations at this workshop and thank you for participating. And now I would like to shortly introduce the, the product that uh, was mentioned in the, in the video of uh, Dr. Zavazava uh, on promoting and measuring universal and meaningful connectivity. And again, we have a little video, so if we can have video too, please to give a general introduction and then I will say a few words about it. Thank you. Universal and meaningful connectivity is the possibility for everyone to enjoy a safe, satisfying, enriching and productive online experience at an affordable cost. It enables access to educational resources, healthcare and government services, job opportunities and much more. Universal and meaningful connectivity is the new imperative 
to enable digital transformation and meet the sustainable development goals. To meet this imperative, we must also address the measurement challenge. Data tells us where we were, where we are, and where we ought to be, and enables individuals, policymakers, and businesses to make better decisions. The International Telecommunication Union and the Office of the United Nations Secretary General's Envoy on Technology established aspirational targets for universal and meaningful connectivity to help monitor progress and galvanize efforts. In addition, ITU and the European Commission launched a global project to promote and measure universal and meaningful connectivity through advocacy, measurement and research. To support the project's advocacy and measurement efforts, ITU's Telecommunication Development Bureau maintains an online dashboard to track progress towards universal and meaningful connectivity. The dashboard lets countries know where they currently stand, where they ought to be, and compare their performance against peers. The dashboard allows us to assess global progress toward each target. Let's join forces to achieve universal and meaningful connectivity and unlock the transformative power of connectivity for everyone, everywhere. If I can have the first presentation, please, then. Thank you. So, as you can see in the video, um, two years ago we launched a number of targets on, on, on universal and meaningful connectivity, and that's really the, the genesis of the project uh, that we're talking about. So we launched a number of targets as part of the digital cooperation roadmap of the UN Secretary General. Um, but of course, just having targets doesn't mean anything if there's no action around it. So we were very pleased that uh, we found a very good partner in the European Union and, and we've launched a, uh, a project for three years for three million uh, euros to promote and measure the concept of universal and meaningful connectivity. So basically bringing uh, the targets and the dashboard that you just saw uh, to life. First of all, what, what we really mean with, with, with meaningful is not that we are telling people what they should do once they have an internet connection. It's the possibility that everyone can go online at any time they want to in a safe, satisfying, enriching, productive, and affordable experience. So the quality of the connection should be good. People should have an affordable data plan with enough data on it. We have a little um, diagram that, 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 that shows what is included, what is excluded, what is um, in the middle you can see uh, universal and meaningful. So everyone should have a connection and uh, it should be meaningful for everyone. What we kept out of the project is uh, how to get there and what comes out of it. It's of course very important, but if we wanna go into that aspect, um, it becomes too complicated. We, first want to focus on first getting the connection to people uh, and getting a good quality connection to people. I don't want to go into too much detail of this, this diagram, but we have some uh, papers that explain it if you're really interested. What we're doing in the project is uh, promoting and measuring. So we have three work streams. There's an advocacy work stream that is bringing uh, the concept to as many policymakers in the world as we can uh, so that there is an increased awareness of UMC, uh, short for Universal and Meaningful Connectivity. Then we have a, a work stream on measurement and uh, capacity building. And I'm from the IST Data and Analytics Division, and that's really the, I mean, the bread and butter of what we do on a daily basis is, is collecting the data and uh, disseminating the data. But we also have a capacity building uh, aspect in all of this because uh, countries uh, often need help in understanding which data are important, how to collect those data. So the, out, the output of that work stream is an improved 
data dissemination, but also an enhanced statistical capacity of countries to measure the concept of UMC. And then finally, we have a, a research work stream. Basically, we want to do every year a, a publication, the Global Connectivity Report, that shows us uh, where we are, but also where we should be going, and also how we could be going there. And the expected output is that there would be better policies for achieving UMC. So this is in more detail, uh, these three work streams. Uh, the event we are at today is, is in the advocacy work stream so that we get the concept out to uh, policy makers. Uh, we want to do more events like this. We also want to prepare briefings um, that policy makers can use, that they can understand what the concept is, how it should work, uh, coupled with websites and, and social media campaigns. Then on the measurement, the capacity building, we have a large data collection already going on as, as part of our daily work. We have a UMC dashboard that you saw in the video. And I will, slow one, will show one more slide on that um, after this one. Then we want to do a number of regional workshops to uh, explain the concept to countries and how to collect the data. Uh, we're going to create an online course for this. We also want to look into new data sources, see if big data can be of help, for example, and how it can be of help. And then finally, in the research, looking for a solution to accelerate progress towards UMC and uh, the Global Connectivity Report. So this is the dashboard. You already saw uh, a bit of it in the, in the video. So we have a number of targets, and every target has an indicator attached to it. So if you're interested in one specific indicator, you can click on that indicator and you see where all the countries in the world are with respect to that indicator. But if you're more interested in a particular country, then you can just go to that country and then see for all the indicators of that country uh, how they are placed uh, with respect to achieving uh, the targets. They may have met it already, they may be on their way, or they may be far away, or maybe there are no data, which is also an, an important indication. So that, that really is, in a nutshell, the, the aim of, of, of the project. And I think it's now time to, to listen to the voices from the various countries in, in how they uh, include UMC in their policies and, and how they measure it. So thank you, and back to you, Denise. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, that was a very good introduction, uh, uh, and I used the platform before, and it, it's really helpful. Uh, the v this workshop is hybrid. Uh, we are online in Zoom, uh, and we have an online moderator, Mr. Uh, Thierry Geiger, head of the ICT Data Analytics Division. I don't know what time is it in Geneva, but um, he's there uh, monitoring the chat. <laughs> Uh, so you have we have dedicated people for this project, which is a very good sign. Uh, and if you raise your hand in Zoom, he will make sure uh, that relevant questions are being channeled to us. Uh, the first panelist is Ms. Agne Vecikevicute, uh, uh, Vice Minister of Transport of Communications, Lithuania. Uh, Lithuania is a country that in a relatively short period reached most of the targets of uh, UMC, Universal and Meaningful Connectivity. So we would like to hear uh, from uh, you, uh, Vice Minister, if and how uh, policy played a pivotal role in getting there, uh, and also how important uh, digital connectivity to policymakers in Lithuania. Can we uh, learn something from you so that we can pass it to other countries? The floor is yours. First of all, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, I like how we uh, present it here in Japan. And um, thank you very much for having me in this panel. I think that IT did a very good work. I was analyzing the dashboard before I came here uh, to this discussion. And uh, I, I was elaborating a little bit with my colleagues. So are we so good, as it says in, in these charts? And uh, we were laughing that, obviously, when we speak about uh, universal, meaningful connectivity, it's never enough. It's never enough. There is always a lot of work uh, that could be done. So in Lithuanian perspective, we look into meaningful connectivity through several aspects. Obviously, it's through the um, yeah, broadband connectivity. I think we have a quite a unique uh, Lithuanian approach and model. 
uh, uh, Lithuania model has uh, also ensured the affordability of being connected because in Lithuania we do have a non-profit organization under the ministry who basically uh, um, um, invest uh, uh, behind the, that organization lies uh, uh, the biggest investments uh, to the broadband deployment and only the last mile is left to the operators. Uh, so this is the way how we can keep the, uh, and I speak about rural areas, so this is the way we can keep the affordability prices within the whole country. I think it's a very successful model and uh, I'm proud to say that uh, we have the lowest prices for the end users in all Europe. So that is one way of looking into, we need to be connected uh, in order to create more opportunities uh, for the meaningful uh, connectivity to appear. And then the other part uh, which we're really focusing on is um, um, our state digitalization development program, uh, which is created uh, but uh, for the whole country, but every ministry has to take a part on it and has to create and initi initiate its own plan how they will reach all the digital uh, targets uh, which were raised for each sector, um, if I may put it this way. And now I would like to share with you um, several aspects of the um, also critical uh, part is skills and knowledge, which are very much necessary to take advantage of digital technologies. Um, and there's another key factor, such as involvement of other ministries, other institutions, civil society, and so on. Um, one type of institutions that is particularly important for the spread of digital skills and literacy are public libraries in Lithuania. Uh, these libraries run a network of 1,200 public inter internet access points in both urban and rural areas and uh, operating in a decentralized manner. So this is uh, one of good uh, examples how we try to reach uh, those um, segments of the society that is not uh, reachable so easily. Also, we have a lot of NGO initiatives in Lithuania, such as Safer Internet Week, All Digital Week, Senior Online Week. Um, so there's a lot of NGO work and uh, implications towards creating um, more opportunities uh, and more skills uh, within the different society groups. And uh, I do believe that um, um, there's also important to represent uh, uh, some particular programs to women. And we have a very well known in Lithuania program, Women Go Tech, where um, people uh, who are already in their career path has a um, possibility uh, to go into the tech world, IT world, and I think it's very well corresponds uh, with ITU goals, uh, how to involve more different society as a part um, uh, in the tech IT world uh, to get the awareness of how it could be helpful for uh, you know better future uh, in the countries. And uh, obviously I did not mention here, but a huge part of it uh, uh, belongs to the private sector as well. So the collaboration between governments, private sector, civil society is necessary here. And from the government perspective, just to highlight one more time, what is really, really important that whatever digital strategies we would create, that it would go horizontally through all sectors, through all ministries. That, And I think this is quite common in different uh, countries as well, that there is someone who is owning the policy in the area and then the others are just trying to implement it. So what we're trying to do in Lithuania, that everyone would understand the digitalization process and meaningful connectivity as a part of their job, as a part of their you know, targets, and be not only involved, but actually really a part of the process. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Vecikeri Chute, for, for that presentation. Uh, we have some time now to get questions uh, from the people here around us uh, or from online. Uh, please uh, just uh, show yourself to me and I, I can pass the microphone uh, to you. In the meantime, uh, I, I have a question for the minister. You, you mentioned, you highlighted about uh, 
sectoral importance of dig digital strategies. Uh, what about uh, at the local and regional level uh, or at the municipality level? Uh, do you have any strategies uh, in that regard? I think uh, municipalities and regional levels are the most uh, important and key level because uh, these you know municipalities are uh, the close closest uh, um, organizations to people. I myself belong to the Council of uh, Lithuanian Capital, so I'm well aware of uh, uh, how municipalities can affect digitalization process um, uh, within the, their cities. So I think that obviously uh, this is the layer uh, which should be distinguished and recognized uh, as a crucial part of the digitalization process. And all these initiatives are taking place firstly from um, maybe uh, more dense cities and uh, our job is to attract it in more into rural areas uh, altogether. So I think that municipalities level here is uh, playing a crucial role as well. And uh, in Lithuanian case, a uh, majority of initiatives are taken by the municipalities in this ar area as well. Thank you so much. Uh, let me look around if there are any questions. Yes. Can we? Uh, please pass the mic, or you can come there. I think uh, people will be able to see you. Yes, the people online. Please uh, introduce yourself and keep the question short. Thank you, Giacomo Mazzone. I'm one of the co-chair of the policy network of meaningful access that uh, will gather this afternoon in the main hall at 5:30 finish the advertising break. Um, the mm, two questions are one for uh, the statistical research made by the ITU. Uh, I see that mm, you do these efforts, but these efforts are limited to the technical part. While uh, UNESCO, for instance, with the Rome indicators, uh, evaluate other qualitative parts of the offer that is available on the internet that is equally important. Uh, there is any coordination between these two efforts, or if not, would be uh, wishful to may have it in the, in the future. And about the minister of Li from Lithuania, uh, the, the question is, the, the access to the internet uh, doesn't finish at the moment that you get the connection. The problem is, how much of the services and contents in local languages are made available to the, um, to the general people. Are you also considering this as part of your policies? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Giacomo, for that question. Uh, if you allow me, Martin, let me give the floor to uh, first Ms. Vecikevicute uh, about the importance of local content. Uh, thank you very much. The question was uh, absolutely uh, uh, on good uh, spot because uh, Lithuania takes a lot of attention on the air governance uh, solutions. You know that uh, the accessibility to different type of services would be very easy. I think uh, we just recently uh, were placed, uh, according to the World Bank, uh, digitalization for the uh, pu public service uh, index on the eighth place uh, worldwide. So in our case, uh, I think uh, it's quite helpful that the country is uh, relatively small. The majority of services could be accessible uh, very easily through the you know, digital uh, service uh, approaches. Uh, we highly use all the technologies uh, uh, newly um, uh, adapted within the society and uh, you basically can do, especially you know, COVID, all the, these processes even enhanced everything so much that uh, now I would say that uh, you can basically do everything through the internet very easily and uh, uh, obviously there is a gap between uh, age, uh, you know, aged people and, uh, but I think it's quite common everywhere uh, so we need to find different you know, ways to uh, uh, reach them. Uh, but the majority of the society are very well aware of the digital solutions and can do mostly 90% of the activities, necessary activities, you know, 
through the internet. So this is a very good point, and uh, we put a, a lot of attention out there. We even have, um, you know, uh, golf tech initiatives uh, to create uh, more like a sandbox regimes to create more digital solutions, uh, you know, to overtake the gaps uh, within this uh, services uh, which cannot be reached yet, um, you know, uh, through the internet. So it's a very successful project uh, as well, uh, award-winning project and from 2019. Uh, it showed that it's it's a very successful way to involve civil society together, you know, with the public sector and private sector, to create some some good solutions that would fit Lithuanian environment, you know, because you you cannot just take it from somewhere. You need to adapt uh, to the circumstances you live in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice Minister Martin. Uh, quantitative versus qualitative. <laughs> yes, that's the, the short summary of it indeed. Um, yes, the, the, the IT indicators, I mean, it's not just technical, it's quantitative because it's not only about uh, the pipes, the, the internet, the subscriptions, but it's also about uh, the use of it. So we, we have two types of indicators, the uh, supply side indicators and the demand side indicators. Uh, and on the demand side we have uh, how people, how many people use the internet, uh, what they do when they use the internet, uh, how they feel, uh, or how the connection is, uh, the activities, the skills, etc. The UNESCO indicators, um, they use also our indicators. There's a part that is really in common, and, 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 and there's a collaboration in the sense that they use uh, our indicators. And at the beginning of the project, we also have been, been talking together about this. Uh, but they go much further. Uh, they, they have many more indicators and a lot of them uh, qualitative, um, which doesn't really fit very well in, in the type of work that we are doing. We, we, we like to collect quantitative indicators. So UNESCO goes further and, and what they do is also more for an individual country assessment where you really need to go to the country and do the assessment, whereas we just use the indicators that we collect for all the countries and, and put them there um, together. So I, I think they, the efforts are complementary. Um, we are coordinated, but maybe not perfectly. Uh, but I know now there's a, there's a project going on in the, in the Pacific where ITU is, is, is directly involved with, with UNESCO. And again, our data are uh, free to use for everyone. And, and UNESCO has the, uses them, and, and um, we certainly work together in that, that direction. There's the Partnership for Measuring IST for Development, which is an international is an international collaboration between international and regional organizations, and both ITU and UNESCO are both member of that partnership. So in that framework, we're also uh, coordinated. Thank you. Uh, Yes, thank you, Martin. Not, on, not only UNESCO, but uh, UNDES also uses your indicators in our uh, e-government survey. Uh, uh, we've been using it since 2003, uh, so that's very helpful. We may get one last question to the minister, if there is. Yeah, Pl please yeah. go ahead. Hello, um, my name is Nils Brock from Rhizomatica and DW Academy. And I have a, a question about the methodology. So uh, with the local network initiatives working a lot about uh, the needs of communities, and I saw this as a category in the methodology, uh, which is really great. I was wondering uh, when it comes to services, uh, so services that give meaning to specific connectivity and how far uh, this is measured in your uh, categories or in how far, and that would be the second question if it's not foreseen as such it is possible to uh, enhance the statistical capacity on, on this side because this was mentioned and uh, also the identification of new data sets so maybe also a question in how far this methodology is open also to add or if it's uh, now also for the time frame uh, closed in terms of the categories that are established because uh, I think from a community perspective uh, 
broadband access is maybe not uh, an, an option for, for many rural communities in the next years. So the services can, that are meaningful can uh, depend and can be uh, quite different because uh, big platforms or uh, data-hungry applications may be just not uh, giving meaning because, uh, because they're not accessible. So what, what from uh, their view uh, gives meaning to, uh, uh, to connectivity? So turning around the question a bit. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think this is a question for ITU. Yes, uh, th thank you for the question. It's it's um, a type of question that we that that we had before, but we're actually staying away from this a little bit. I mean, to, to start with, when we when you saw communities in the in the framework, but communities from the po from the point of view of universality, that means we want all communities to be connected to the internet and using the internet. The problem is that we don't have any good indicators there um, because there's no good quality data on what a community is, how communities are uh, using the internet and, and how to survey that. That is very difficult. Um, so we have to do with proxies there. As to the services run, done on the internet, what people do on the internet, we actually quite specifically on purpose uh, left that out. We had a very long discussion about that in, in the beginning and everyone was saying it's very important. Local content is important, and I, and I fully agree. Local content is extremely important. But once you start there, then you have to t take choices that we don't want to take. Um, E-agriculture is very useful for, for, for farming. Uh, E-learning is very good for people to get skills. Absolutely true. Um, but does that mean that we don't like people to watch a video on YouTube while they're waiting for the public transport to come? So. To, to really put a, a value on what people do on the internet that is too hard for us and also to, to draw the, the barrier. So we decided to focus on people should be using the internet or if people want to use the internet, they should be capable of using the internet uh, with good quality infrastructure uh, in an affordable way and in a safe way. And then what they do on the internet and what the impact of that is, those are extremely interesting and important questions, but we kept them out of our focus because otherwise our focus would be too too wide and we wouldn't be able to do anything meaningful if I uh, may use that word. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Miss Minister, would you like to? Okay, uh, so I would like to now move to the next speaker. Uh, uh, and I think the, for the second question, I also encourage uh, we can discuss after, after, the, uh, after the session in more detail with the person who asked the question. But let's now go to Brazil. Uh, Mr. Alexandro Barbosa, head uh, Center of Studies for Information and Communication Technologies, CETIC.br. Uh, how can solid data inform policymakers on where the country stands with respect to U UMC and where are the digital divides uh, in a country and with the vulnerable groups? So, Alejandro, you have uh, seven, eight minutes. Thank you very much, um, Dennis, and thank you, um, the previous speakers, for giving and setting the stage for uh, what I'm going to speak about the Brazilian case. May I ask uh, our colleagues from the technical support to, yeah, thank you very much. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the intention here today is to share a little bit how Brazil um, is um, adopting this concept of meaningful and universal connectivity and put this concept into practice and how we are measuring um, this concept. It is important to mention that um, in case of Brazil, uh, policymakers and the regulator, policymakers from the Minister of Communication and, and the regulator in the country, they have embraced this concept of meaningful and um, universal connectivity. And from our side, CETIC is an um, ICT statistical data produ producer that provides uh, measurement to, to policymakers. Let me start by saying that uh, for us to understand how we can move from the previous concept that we have in terms of digital divide, because we are not more interested in having or not having connectivity. We are more in interested in providing um, a more um, meaningful use of internet and enhance uh, the internet experience for the, 
for the users. So this concept of meaningful connectivity and universal connectivity um, is a critical concept to understand um, how we can achieve broader objectives in the digital age so that we can understand not if you are connected or not connected, but what are the digital inequalities and how can we bridge the existing gaps, especially in terms of um, device and uh, skills, safety, etc. So this concept allows us to understand how we can reduce inequalities in not only in the access, but also in the use of the um, internet and digital skills as well. So it is a critical concept. Um, this concept also help policymakers to understand the needs um, and the gaps, existing gaps, uh, to promote sustainable development uh, so that we can really ensure that no one is left behind in the digital era. And through this critical concept, we also can highlight the need to address these issues within a more comprehensive global digital cooperation framework. So having said that, um, it is important that we understand inequalities in three different levels. At the level of inf infrastructure, I mean connectivity, if you have coverage, if you have access, not only at the household uh, level, but also individual levels, and the quality of this connectivity is really a uh, connectivity um, that provides high speed, that, that there is no data caps. So this is very important. And also, what type of device are you using? Um, I come from Brazil, and although we have um, a high penetration um, of uh, broadband, most um, low-income households, they only access the internet through mobile uh, devices which is uh, really limited. So in this first level, we are talking about infrastructure, connectivity, and quality of access. In the second level, we are talking about the usage, how uh, citizens are using internet, what are their digital skills, uh, what are the barriers or motivations, and at the third level, which are more, um, I would say, proficiency, um, proficient usage of internet, we are talking about really tangible outcomes, like uh, content creation um, and uh, promoting well-being through the use of internet. And uh, the level of analysis that we, we can provide through the adoption of this concept of meaningful and universal connectivity, we can analyze at the micro level, including individual demographics, understanding uh, uh, educational levels, understanding uh, socioeconomic income, um, age, gender, and many other uh, socioeconomic variables. At the meso level, we are talking about the offline networks, the communities, and the neighborhood effects. If you are internet users in a poor community or in a remote community, what are the net, uh, net, uh, neighborhood effects that will affect this user? And at the macro level, we have other components which is very important mainly uh, related to regulation, competition, coverage, and affordability. Those are variables or dimensions that will affect this concept of meaningful and uh, universal connectivity. Well, I think that Martin has already gave a very good uh, uh, background, a conceptual background on this um, concept. I'm not going to uh, discuss this again, but what I'm going to do here from this slide onwards is to understand what are the universality metrics that we are using to describe uh, how people are using, how households are connected, community and business, and in terms of connectivity enablers, enablers I will uh, share with you um, indicators that we are using to discuss infrastructure, affordability, device, skills, security, and safety. So um, I will start now uh, showing some uh, indicators that will cover those uh, universal and meaningful uh, dimensions of this concept. Here uh, you have the universality metric related to people. So as you can see, um, 
by the way, we have a very long track history of, in terms of data series in Brazil since 2005, which coincides with the launch of the Partnership on Measuring ICT for Development, which was uh, in 2004. But since then, Brazil has every single year several surveys, not only household, but also others. But I'm just uh, showing um, in the last eight years what happened in terms of um, internet users in Brazil. You can see that we had a, a, a very significant uh, growth. Uh, but we still have some challenges in, in breaching some gaps, like, for instance, the urban-rural gaps. Uh, rural areas is uh, 10 percentage points below uh, the total uh, access. If you, if you move only for um, um, urban areas, the, the proportion is, is still higher. And we can see that in terms of households, this uh, universality metrics is now, I moved from individual to the household level. We have 80% of the Brazilian households covered by broadband connectivity. Um, and also, this slide is very interesting to see when you have disaggregated data, what type of analysis that you can provide to policymakers to design effective policies uh, to address specific issues like uh, socioeconomic um, gap. We, uh, the low-income households in Brazil, uh, which represents the majority of the, the population, we have only 6% of um, households with internet access, whereas in the high-income households, you have it al already universal, 98%. In terms of um, infrastructure, now I uh, call your attention for the infrastructure as a connectivity enabler for meaningful and universal connectivity. Here we have an equal penetration of fixed broadband in households in Brazil. If you go to the south and southeast uh, regions of the country, which are the richest uh, part of the country, uh, we will have most of households having broadband connectivity, but if you go to the Amazon forest region, we have most, um, uh, we have a, a higher proportion of connectivity covered by radio or satellite. Uh, in the same in the north uh, east of the country. Alexander, you have around two minutes. Uh, oh. I know the indicator <laughs> will go very fast. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, in terms of uh, so this again shows the unequal penetration of fixed broadband in Brazil in terms of urban and rural areas by different types of uh, connectivity like fiber, uh, radio, satellite, etc. Um, someone has mentioned about connectivity networks. We had uh, s conducted a study specific on community net networks in Brazil that also provides policymakers with uh, important insights to design policies um, in terms of a meaningful and universal connectivity. This uh, in terms of, again, connectivity, fiber, uh, fiber optic in Brazil has really uh, grown very fast in the last years. Uh, in terms of affordability, uh, I just would like to highlight that um, high-income households spend over three ta 30 times uh, more on ICT services when compared to low-income households. Um, in terms of um, uh, major use of using mobile, you can see again that low-income households uh, use a very large proportion exclusively on mobile phones. Uh, this is uh, almost the same, but with another disaggregation. Uh, here is important to mention about skills. This concept is uh, skills plays a very important role in um, meaningful connectivity. If you don't have digital skills, you are not going to use uh, the internet in a meaningful way. And here again, you can see uh, uh, comparison, what happens when um, you go to act activities performed online. Most of uh, higher proportions are related to communications, whereas uh, more sophisticated uh, activities uh, is very um, uh, in lower proportion. Here again, related to the use of um, access by mobile and by computers or by both. And what the message this 
uh, data shows is that when you are um, you internet users using ex exclusively mobile, you have lower proportion of digital skills. Uh, and here is a very important mention. Uh, uh, reinforce what I have said, mobile users, they develop less sophisticated activities uh, when compared to computers and mobile phone users. I'm going to reach the end of my presentation just to, to show that Brazil has implemented a privacy and personal data protection survey to measure how individuals and organizations are aligned with the Brazilian law on personal data protection. And here, uh, I would like to highlight the fact that stakeholder engagement and cooperation is really very important in this process. We have been working with uh, the partnership uh, members, such as ITU, um, UNCTAD, OSD, UNDESA, uh, UNICLAC, in terms of defining uh, and implementing these uh, measurements. And my last, last message is that indicators for me measuring universal and meaningful connectivities, they are critical and we need to have them in a disaggregated format. We, have, we may um, have different type of um, or different level of disaggregation by, based on different variables. And the target for meaningfulness uh, use of internet may change over time. What is good today may not be enough tomorrow. So uh, again, national average without disaggregation may not be able to capture inequalities uh, in the country. And I think that uh, my last message is uh, that ITU plays a very important role in fostering um, the increase of data production among member states. We do have a lot of uh, data on infrastructure, but low uh, data availability in skills and other uh, key dimensions, such as security, safety use, as uh, the concept imposed those, those dimensions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dennis, and sorry for taking longer time. Thank you. No, no, no problem. You took uh, time from your Q&A section. So you will... <laughs> Uh, but thank you. This was a very comprehensive uh, presentation, and, and you mentioned many things. Uh, I will again invite people in the room uh, to ask you uh, one question. Uh, and if you have a question, please, uh, you can walk up to the mics behind me, and you can ask your question. Yeah. W while waiting for questions from the room, uh, let me just uh, thank uh, our online moderator. Uh, there is Catherine Townsend from Measurement Lab. You can also, Catherine, uh, if you would like to uh, ask a question, you can ask after the, uh, after the question in the room. And also, I would like to read very quickly. Uh, these are not taken from Alexandra's Q&A time. Uh, we received a feedback from uh, Bangkok ITU uh, working on the Smart Island uh, Initiative in Asia Pacific that uh, one of the things uh, they are establishing is universal service obligation policy if people are interested in to learn more but yeah let's take the question now hello good morning thank you very much for the presentation Carlo Rey Moreno from the Association for Progressive Communications a uh, really interesting effort, I mean, uh, moving from universal access to meaningful access and all the indicators and the work that has been done there, coinciding very much with Alexandre and the presentation on the need of accuracy, in, not accuracy, but maybe granularity, because if we have advanced from 75 to 95% and, and a target being met from 95 to 100%, uh, you are leaving a lot of people behind on that granularity. There is uh, indicators such as affordability that is looking at a very low amount of data there are many studies that uh, say that the trend of consumption of data is going higher and higher, and, uh, and those indicators are, are remaining a bit low if we are considering how much data people are going to be using in 2030, and the affordability for that and the granularity when there are uh, huge inequalities inside countries. 
Um, that would be one thing. The other thing, and, and whether there is an opportunity to to reconsider those those indicators. The other one would be about the accuracy of the data. There are uh, uh, exercises by civil society and universities, at least in uh, Malaysia and Nigeria, that I know that are creating tools to challenge the data, in particular around coverage and around the quality of the coverage in rural and remote areas, because it's way less than the one that is being reported. So what is the quality of the data that, that, that you are using? What is the source? And how, and how could we work together into improving the quality of the data that is being used to actually uh, uh, measure against the indicators that you are using? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much for that question. I see we may have one more question. Let's also take that one, uh, and then Alexandra answers two of them at the same time. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. My name is Farzana Badi. I'm doing some research for USAID, and they are working on human-centered approaches to uh, digital transformation. So I was wondering if in your um, in, in your definition of uh, meaningful connectivity, you also consider this uh, kind of like human-centered approach, and if you, uh, if there are ways to discuss with the commun different communities that you work with, and build the network, uh, what what the, their needs are, and uh, just looking for best practices and best approaches about that. Sorry if it's not relevant, but I thought I raised. Thanks. No, thank you. It's very relevant. Uh, yeah, Alessandro, first yeah. you, but if the other panelists would like to respond to second question, they can. Yes. Well, thank you for the both questions. Um, the first one related to data quality. This is an issue. Uh, we have been discussing, uh, discussing this issue of data availability and quality in the international forums, such as the ITU forum, which holds uh, two expert groups on ICT stat statistics. Um, in case of Brazil, uh, CETIC conducts, uh, so those are primary data. Uh, we follow uh, strictly the international re methodological recommendation with a um, uh, probability sample, a representative sample in Brazil. And the sample is designed so that we can provide disaggregated data in the variables that was foreseen in the design of the sample. So those data um, are high quality data and the months, most of them demand the side data, but um, every member state also provide supply data, uh, statistical data on the offer and coverage of infrastructure, and those data are particularly provided by regulators. So regulators compile the data from the, um, uh, the operators and submit it to ITU. And uh, the data that ITU uh, maybe uh, Martin can speak with more um, pro uh, more legitimacy on that, but member states they provide uh, consolidated and aggregated data, uh, but every member state should be able to disaggregate that data so that we can understand inequalities in, at the different levels: education, age, gender, regional, rural, urban versus rural. So um, the quality is a very important issue. The second um, question related to human-centered approach. Uh, this is a very relevant question, but um, it is not considered in this um, design of this or implementation of this concept. I don't know if uh, Martin wanna. Considering the time, Martin, you can respond briefly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for reminding. Uh, so can we go to Catherine online? Uh, Maybe so Catherine Townsend, uh, if you are still online, uh, please take the floor. And I don't know if the online moderator can help us uh, to give, to make Catherine and also uh, Anir Chaudhry uh, on, uh, presenter. Hi, Thierry here. Um, Catherine cannot unmute herself, so I can now. Uh, okay. Oh, there you go. Great. Thank you all so much. Uh, so yeah, Catherine Townsend, um, thank you for this session uh, today. 
Um, I uh, run a, a nonprofit called Measurement Lab, which provides the largest open data set about the speed and performance of the internet and, and interconnection points around the world. Um, and you know, primarily the way that people experience how well their service is, is by running a speed test. Um, and speed is not well defined and it's sort of an imperfect proxy of uh, what a user's experience is. Um, there's a lot of investment right now in broadband infrastructure and even broadband is not sort of a universally recognized goal um, of what connectivity should be. So all of this background to say that we're um, trying to improve our own metrics for what means um, meaningful connectivity, or since you all have defined this, then we have this internet quality barometer. And so I wanted to ask you all, um, when you think of uh, additional information that you would have liked to have in developing the meaningful connectivity metrics, particularly those the technical community could add to and support, um, you know, what are the gaps and what are the sort of specific measurements that you would hope to see? Thank you. Th thank you, Catherine. Uh, I think all the panelists can think about that question. What component of meaningful co connectivity do, you, do we think uh, we can get more help from the technical community? But respecting time, uh, I will go to the next panelist now. Uh, European uh, Commission, Mr. Peter Marian, Director General. Uh, he will be talking about Global Gateway, which is a program through which the EU is strengthening connections uh, between Europe and the world. So let's hear from that, but please keep in mind Catherine's question, uh, all panelists, and we will go back to Martin as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and maybe we can come back and to the questions a bit later. Uh, so my name is uh, Peter Marien. Um, I work in the um, um, European Commission, Director General International Partnerships, and I am uh, Head of Sector for Digital Governance. Um, so first of all, I'd like to underline uh, the EU support uh, to this um, development and further development of uh, uh, this um, work on universal meaningful connectivity. Um, we started thinking about um, such uh, needs a few years ago, and we were also inspired by the by the EU's approach, which is, amongst others, the, the Digital Economy and Society Index. It's not the same thing, but having robust data, uh, we do consider that as a as a, um, an essential condition to be able to measure, you know, what uh, we and our partners um, are are doing, uh, whether we are achieving objectives, and and of course to set policy to achieve those objectives. Um, and, I, and as I could see from previous speakers and the questions uh, in the room, this need for data uh, is essential and, and we are very happy to work with, with ITU um, on this. Um, so I've been asked to um, elaborate on the EU's um, uh, experience with global partnerships and also with the global um, gateway. Um, <coughs> So I will go uh, through a few slides um, in that context. So the Global Gateway is, is an opportunity for uh, partnerships um, between the European Union and you know, partners around the world. Um, the European Commission has foreseen investments of around 300 billion um, euro uh, in the next couple of years. Uh, these investments will come from European Union grants, but of course, as was also mentioned by other uh, speakers here, um, of course, we do this also together with the private sector, and that also includes banks and the, the financial leverage of uh, various banks and financial intermediaries. Um, the Global Gateway uh, intends to be a um, principle-based um, um, cooperation uh, mechanism, um, with uh, which f focuses on a few sectors, and one important sector is digital. So when we look at digital, um, our Policy um, will cover uh, elements such as, you know, focusing on the government side, the business side, infrastructures and skills. Let's say that's the, the large compass um, that you can see on the slide. But then um, when we um, go a little bit deeper, how does the Global Gateway, you know, differentiate? How is this an alternative offer of, of what is uh, available to our partners? Um, I'd like to point out the following elements, and this also resonates with what was said uh, by, by previous speakers and, and people in the room. So 
Um, EU promotes a human-centric digital transformation. We put the, the person at the center, not the companies, not the states, and this then reflects itself in uh, the policies. We want a trusted uh, internet, an open and free internet, where people um, you know, can feel safe and secure, where their privacy is respected, um, and which then leaves nobody behind. <coughs> Objective is to bridge the digital divide. I will, I will go a bit fast because I know we're, we're short on time. Um, we want to increase resilience. Uh, security is important. You can also see this in the universal meaningful connectivity uh, indicators, uh, the aspect of security and safety. Boosting digital sovereignty is essential. Um, it's, of course, a very delicate topic, uh, but we also think that uh, this is something where the EU can, um, where we hope to be uh, um, an equal partner and a trusted partner uh, with our partners where we, we think of uh, the interest of, of all the parties involved. And this is important when it goes, when we talk about, for example, data governance amongst uh, so many things, uh, privacy. I mentioned the open uh, internet. And then, of course, uh, promoting the twin transition. Uh, for us, this means to focus on environmental sustainability. So the global gateway is, is about investments, but these investments are in hard infrastructure and in soft elements. And um, they are supposed, they are meant to be um, sustainable. And sustainable means transparent, transparent funding, but also sustainable funding and environmentally sustainable, amongst others. Um, so now I'll, I'll just jump into some examples. Uh, in March of this year, in Colombia, the EU uh, launched the eu LAC Digital Alliance with a whole range of Latin American and Caribbean countries. Um, this um, alliance has uh, different elements. On the one hand, there's a policy aspect to it, and on the other hand, uh, you know, with, with regular um, policy dialogue on a range of topics, but also with concrete action. And so this action is already uh, ongoing, uh, so I'll run th through a few examples. Uh, as a first element, we will work on policy and regulatory frameworks together. That includes policy on connectivity, on e-governance, on data governance, on cybersecurity, um, and uh, probably soon we will, I mean, we are already discussing to, to have regulatory framework discussions on the topic of artificial intelligence. And of course, this all links again to this universal meaningful connectivity indicators because it's not just about investing in uh, hardware. Uh, another example uh, of this is the expansion of the Bella program. The Bella program is a, a fiber optic cable between Europe and Latin America. This fiber optic cable, I'll, I'll come back to that later in one of the next slides. <coughs> Third point, the private sector was mentioned uh, today. Uh, so digital transformation without the private sector uh, is a no-no. <laughs> I mean, it, that will not work. So uh, in the EU, like Digital Alliance, uh, there is also um, the setup of what we call the acceler digital accelerator, where basically we intend to set up uh, about 100 uh, new joint ventures and about 50 startups. Um, and then as a third point, fourth point, sorry, I, I'll just mention something about Copernicus, which is Earth Observation System, so satellite data. So um, the Bella Link, on the left image, you see the current in blue, the current cable as it runs. Um, and on the right hand side, you see uh, the proposed um, extensions of this cable as we are speaking. Now, this seems like we're talking about hardware, but and it is, <laughs> but uh, this program also connects more than 1,200 academic um, institutions. And in that sense, again, it relates to this universal meaningful connectivity indicators. Of course, it also relates to affordability and so on and so on. But um, at the moment, uh, there's a big focus on the academic link. Okay, um, I mentioned Earth observation, just to say that um, one of the questions is, okay, but what do you do with connectivity? Well, the, the European Union Copernicus uh, system is a set of satellites providing uh, Earth observation data. It's, I've been informed, it's at the moment the, the most advanced system that there is. Well, this system gives open and free data to any individual who wishes to access this data around the globe. 
and um, so this can be used for a whole range of policies. We are working uh, to set up a local data hub in Panama and also one in Chile, but I, I won't go into more detail right now. And that, of course, can then you know, lead to policies and all kinds of other economic and social um, impacts. Um, the Universal Meaningful Connectivity Indicators also look at safety and security. So also in the EU LAC uh, context, uh, let's say Latin American, Caribbean, we are working on cybersecurity. There's a whole range of uh, actions that we are doing on cybersecurity, policy regulation, critical infrastructure protection, capacity building, but also the mainstreaming of cyber in our programming. So, you know, the whole topic of, of secure and trusted connectivity is, has been high on the agenda since some time, and so we, we take this into account with all our programs. Um, and then, as a concrete example, in the Dominican Republic, we have set up a, a regional cybersecurity hub for the whole region together with our partners, of course. So there I gave previously an example of um, a regional alliance, because we uh, talk about partnerships, EU LAC, but we also work, of course, at, at bilateral level and uh, at other levels. At bilateral level, I just want to point out the concept of digital economy packages, where, as you can see on this slide, we, we want to link uh, our partnerships and investments in infrastructure with investments and partnerships on the soft elements and the soft elements, for example, on data governance, on digital skills, e-government, uh, amongst others. And so concretely speaking, this slide gives an example of um, our cooperation with Kenya. So in Kenya, you can see below on the slide a whole range of European Union um, countries that are coming together in a Team Europe spirit, uh, together with the European Union you know, institutions. And we provide a, a package of uh, digital action with Kenya. And so in total, for the next couple of years, we're looking at 430 million euro. And um, I won't go into much details here because of the time, but you can see that we're, we're looking at reducing the gap, leapfrogging, uh, but also assuring an open and inclusive governance. And in th with the arrows, I wanted just to highlight some elements related, again, to universal meaningful connectivity. So on the left, you see last mile digital connectivity. This was also mentioned today. What about this rural? Um, what about, um, you know, the, the most vulnerable um, communities? Um, um, it says they're, um, you know, expanding the network and the fiber. So this is also about uh, submarine cables, but also terrestrial and last mile. Looking at TVET, uh, so that's um, vocational education. We are working with hundreds of TVET uh, institutions in Kenya on the skilling. And on the right hand, for example, you see data protection and procurement legislation and cybersecurity. So this is again about policy and other elements which can impact affordability and safety and security. Um, the digital package, as we call it, with Kenya was announced uh, last week in Kenya by our commissioner. This is the tweet she put, and as you can see in the tweet, she mentions remote places and unprivileged areas and leaving nobody behind. And I would like to finish with, with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director General. Uh, that was a very rich presentation, and, and again, I think all the presentations will be online who would like to access later. I think we have time now for one question for the Director General. Uh, if you have a question, please stand up uh, and, and uh, ask your question. If, if you would like to add, no, please. No, thank you very much. I just want to specify, I'm, I'm the head of sector, not the director general, but okay. you know, thanks for the promotion. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that clarification. Uh, Martin, you did not answer to a previous question. Yes, uh, thank you, Denise. Uh, there's still a few questions from the from the previous sessions where I, I own answer. Um, so, a human-centered approach that that actually I'm, I'm I'm sure it's not really the answer that 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 you want to hear. But we also have a human-centered approach. So we look at we want people to be using the internet. We also have we, we're not focusing on business, but on people and everything uh, around people and 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 communities. There were a few questions on uh, the quality of the indicators on the targets themselves, if they can be changed, uh, that the targets are moving. Uh, yes, 
we have an initial set of targets, but the idea is that to keep on monitoring this and also to uh, annually look at the targets uh, as part of the, the project and, and see where they need changing if we need to, to, to have different targets, if we have to move the targets or if we have to include other indicators maybe. There's a few areas where we are not so strong. Um, safety and security, we don't have any good indicators at the moment. Um, the question from, from Catherine online is also one that's very important and, and very good. We, we do have a target on speed, but uh, we don't have good indicators yet, so we, we were very happy to, to talk to you and see how we can uh, maybe include your work in, in ours or, or, or how we can uh, move together. We're also looking at alternative sources of data. Uh, we have a number of big data products uh, going on in our division, uh, and that can help in getting better uh, regional data in countries, for example, which was also one of the comments. Um, the, the, the comment was that in rural areas, the, the reality on the ground is maybe not the reality that you see in the data and the data that we get. And, and we get the data from the regulator. We do process the data, but uh, it, it, it is possible, of course, that the reality on the ground is not exactly uh, the way it's perceived uh, in the data that, that we get online. So for that, the big data project, uh, the measurement lab data can all uh, help in, in moving forward there. Okay, uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, is there any question uh, for, uh, uh, for, for Peter online? If, if not, uh, let me move to the next uh, panelist, uh, Mr. Anir Chaudhry, uh, Policy Advisor, A2I Program Bangladesh. Uh, he is online, I believe he is in, uh, he's in North America right now. Uh, so we are now moving from a, a, yeah, a, a, a large country in Asia, has still a, a considerable journey to go towards UMC, uh, but where connectivity is considered very important so we, we pose the same questions to uh, Mr. Chaudhry. Anir, if you are online, the floor is yours. And I think we may need to upgrade Anir's uh, level in Zoom so he can speak. Yes, so Anya can still cannot uh, unmute himself if the IS moderator can uh, give him the right to unmute and uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, good. I think I'm on right now. Dennis, can you hear me? Yes, Anya, the floor is yours. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I've been listening uh, with a lot of interest uh, what other speakers have been saying. Well, thank you for, the, uh, for giving me the floor. Uh, in Bangladesh, uh, we're actually seeing a surge in terms of uh, internet usage, but still not at a point where uh, we'd like it to be. Uh, to increase internet uh, penetration, what we have done, in addition to the, uh, the cell phone providers, the MNOs, uh, which have covered 98% of the country with 4G, uh, the av availability is there, but in terms of access, it's still lacking. So I'll come to that point. But in terms of <coughs> fixed broadband, what we have done is we have uh, worked with the private sector, uh, three national transmission providers to connect about 3,800 rural locations. So these are the lowest tier of local government institutions in the country. So about 3,800 rural locations have connected with fiber in the last few years. And another 700 plus locations, which are hard to reach uh, the island areas, the hilly areas. So we have used the service obligation fund, uh, which is a, a percentage of the profit that the MNOs deposit uh, with our regulators. So we've used that fund to connect another 700 plus locations uh, with fiber or radio connectivity. And we have a new project that started uh, <clears throat> just last year where we are going to connect about 110,000 institutions uh, with fiber. So these will cover all the government offices at the lowest tier, 
uh, almost all the schools, uh, primary and secondary schools, uh, you'll see the data shows that uh, the school connectivity is quite low. So this will remedy that situation. We'll also connect uh, the courts, about 2,000 courts across the country, the 14,000 plus uh, health facilities in the rural areas, uh, a lot of the post office, so about 8,000 plus post offices will be connected. So about 110,000 institutions across the entire country will be covered. And we're expecting that to be done. The coverage will be done in the next few months. Now, after that, so these are the 110,000 institutions, but that still won't have fiber coverage to the homes. And that's where we are expecting the ISPs in the country. We have uh, uh, over a thousand, close to 2,000 actually ISPs, uh, about a thousand of them actually work in the rural areas. So they'll be extending uh, connectivity to the rural locations. Now that brings me to the question of cost. Uh, our regulator actually has capped the cost uh, to an affordable level. It's just been uh, the fiber has not been extended to the rural areas. Uh, the uh, the cost of uh, 4G uh, is 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 at a, at an affordable level for the most part. Uh, we have many different packages, uh, packages that run for three hours, packages that run for three days, seven days. So there are many different types of packages that the telcos have provided that have quite an affordable cost. The cost has been brought down many, many times in the last uh, few years to a, to a point that it's affordable. But what is one of the uh, biggest bottlenecks right now is the availability of smartphones. The smartphone penetration is only about 52% in the country. So even though uh, uh, broadband is, is available, it's I won't say it's, uh, it's at a point where it's meaningful uh, connectivity is there because the devices are not available. Devices are still expensive compared to the per capita income in the country. Add to that the issue of uh, digital skills. Just today, I was discussing, uh, I just finished a conference at MIT Innovation Lab uh, just a couple of hours ago, and we were discussing what does digital connectivity and what does digital skills mean in the near future. The issue of connectivity will actually become more and more important. As we know, uh, in Bangladesh, the official figures that I see in the dashboard here is quite low. Uh, within the country, we have, a, we have a higher figure when we add the mobile connectivity. It's about 70% connective internet connectivity that we talk about today. And this one actually is talking about less than 40%, this official figure. Uh, but because of uh, smartphone, low smartphone penetration, uh, we actually don't see meaningful usage of that broadband. Uh, so from a skill standpoint, what we discussed today at MIT is that what will, what will the skills requirement, requirement be in future? Uh, today, we talk about uh, the ability to use a keyboard. It could be a small keyboard on a smartphone or a large keyboard on a laptop or a computer or a desktop uh, that uh, people must use uh, for us to say that that person is digitally literate. But in future, and that future is not too far, we're actually seeing uh, the emergence of large language models in AI and ability of uh, users, uh, just digitally, current digitally illiterate users to use computation uh, just using languages, native languages. So we actually are deploying just in the next week, we're deploying a large language model in the native language Bangla to augment our national call centers. A lot of the questions that our national call center operators have been answering for the last three years will now actually be answered by uh, uh, voice bots. And that technology will mature over time. So what will happen in the next two to three years is actually we'll see a lot of native languages around the world uh, start to use uh, large language models and the digital literacy concept will be totally redefined. So that's a very important aspect for us to think about, which I don't know if you are thinking in the policy debate right now. Uh, we just completed, uh, just a, a couple of months ago, completed a research called Equality Research, E-Quality Research. And that looks at the issues of digital divide. Obviously, connectivity or meaningful connectivity is one of the prime areas of digital divide. Uh, Two thirds of the population are connected globally. One third is actually not even 2.6 billion people are not on the internet. In Bangladesh, very similar numbers. One third is not on the internet. 
The second issue is the digital literacy that I talked about, which will be completely redefined because of AI and large language models. And the third issue, which came up in our research and we don't talk too much about, is the issue of content and service design. The way we have designed it for the ultra poor, the way we have designed it for the persons with disabilities, the way we have designed it for the women, the way we have designed it for the uh, the the CMSMEs, the cottage, micro, small, and medium enterprises. So when I say the way we have designed it, we actually have not designed it for these clientele. We have not designed them for the hardcore poor, not designed them for the persons with disabilities, not designed them for the women, not designed them for the CMSMEs. And that's where a lot of our attention needs to happen. So even if we achieve uh, full coverage in terms of internet connectivity, affordable internet connectivity, the digital skills will, will be solved with AI uh, to a large extent. If we don't design the services in a, in a meaningful way, then we will not actually get to the point of meaningful connectivity because people will not be able to use the content and services uh, meaningfully to the, to the best of their advantage. We'll still actually widen the digital divide. So that's something I think we need to bring in our discourse, that the re research report that we published for Bangladesh just two weeks ago at the UN General Assembly, the equality report only looks at the Bangladesh perspective, uh, but that is similar to many perspectives of the LDCs and the countries in the global south. We hope to extend that research uh, through the equality center that we also launched two weeks ago. Uh, we hope to extend that research to other LDCs in the next few years with the support of uh, organizations uh, at the UN, World Bank, World Economic Forum, Commonwealth Secretariat, and many other organ partner organizations that we are working with. Thank you very much, Dennis. Thank you, Anir. This was really a valuable input to this discussion, uh, and I know that uh, it was not the ideal uh, scenario for you to connect remotely, but we, we very much appreciate. Let me first turn to the room and also the online participants, if there are any questions uh, for Anir. Questions? Yes, please. Hello. Uh, thank you for the, the presentation. My question is, uh, if we take the the, uh, the concept of meaningful connectivity, also sometimes touches on the, the idea of having connectivity everywhere, everywhere, not just limited to uh, some places or, or when, when it's connected in work, in schools. So how do you, you in Bangladesh, deal with this, uh, these two options of the policy? So enforcing, uh, enhancing connectivity in, in institutions. So the idea is to, f is to foster connectivity in institutions of both in households and institutions or, or how to, to connect both both places and how do you deal with this in, in your policy making in the field? Thank you so much. An Anir, would you, would you like to briefly respond? Sure, sure. Uh, in my deliberation, I talked about uh, those two issues. So one is the institutional connectivity. Uh, we have extended fiber connectivity to the rural areas, but not to the institutional level. So these are 4,500 plus rural locations that we have connected as hubs of connectivity that will be branched out to the institutions. And as I mentioned, about 110,000 institutions will be connected in the next uh, few months. That includes offices, schools, health facilities, courts, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's one uh, fiber connectivity. That's a public-private partnership with the three national transmission providers and over 1,000 ISPs. So that's what will happen and we'll actually get fiber to, to households also through affordable price, and we'll set the price to the regulator. But then there is also the wireless connectivity uh, that is going through uh, our telcos, uh, 4G connectivity. But as I mentioned, uh, even though about 98% of the country has 4G network, uh, only about half of it is actually being used because of lack of devices. Uh, uh, so affordable devices and the right design of those services and content. So when we are able to address the device costs uh, affordable uh, to the right uh, persons and households, and we'll be able to design the services and content in a way that makes sense to the 
currently marginalized population, that, that's when actually these issues will be resolved. So there, there are policy uh, matters that we're actually addressing, technology that we're deploying, uh, skills development that we're also going through. But again, as I mentioned with AI, the skills development will be a thing of the past in the next uh, few years. Does that answer your question, sir? Thank you. Thank you, Anir. Uh, and I, uh, yes, are there any questions in the room? No. Uh, we, we are coming to uh, the end of our session now. Uh, before, before we close, I would like to give one last opportunity to all uh, speakers. If there is anything that you couldn't pass, pass it out. Uh, maybe Alexandra, we can start with you, but please keep it one or two minutes so that uh, people watching us online, they can make reference to the, to the final point. Th thank you very much, uh, Dennis. Well, I think that um, this concept of um, UMC is really important uh, at this uh, moment that we're living in um, where this information and the lack of skills to content creation uh, critical use of internet is of utmost importance. What I, my message is to countries to really uh, produce uh, data that can be used to measure this, um, the progress towards achieving this concept. So um, Brazil is um, maybe among the countries that produce uh, um, many statistics in this area. And I think that uh, what we would like to see is uh, other member states also producing data that will allow, uh, allow um, track the progress. Thank you. Uh, Agne, Miss, uh, would you like to add something? Um, thank you very much for such an insightful discussions and uh, messages so far. Um, I will just add up several aspects uh, from our side. I think what is really important as in all discussions uh, was highlighted uh, collaboration and coordination uh, within the government, uh, within the other stakeholders uh, as well. This is a huge part of uh, um, making it happen. And of course, um, I want to reflect on one of the questions from the audience. Uh, I think what is really important is not only the quality of data, but that all these measures would be um, checked once in a while if the measures are um, good enough at that time. It means that everything is changing so fast and we need to be adaptable, we need to be flexible in a way we approach um, the measures. And um, of course, the backbone of everything is data quality. And I bring this message back to myself uh, as a government official every day, how to make sure that we would gather more quality data um, to make more insightful decisions and, and then to measure the progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Peter, please. Thank you very much. <coughs> After these excellent comments, it's uh, you know, hard to add uh, many more, but uh, just a few. I, I think for me, uh, this kind of discussion uh, confirms um, also our, our need uh, and our, our commitment to this kind of work. Because, you know, <coughs> a, a lot of, uh, I think a lot of the community in organizations uh, like, like mine, we are very much focused on you know, making things happen in the field but we do need to do the, the basic homework to know what it is we need to do. And in that context, I think, you know, again, having the data and everything that was said about this remains so important. And of course, we know also how difficult that is within the countries in the field, you know, in our countries, in our partner countries. So it should be done at global level, but of course it needs to be done in the end at the local level. Um, Maybe just to add also, yes, what, what I took away is that um, the challenge of the last mile connectivity or whatever you want to call it, and uh, we are actually also yeah, struggling with that quite a bit, uh, how to make that interesting for the private operators or, or, or for the public operator then, but you know, under which philosophy do you uh, spend taxpayers' money on that, if you would. 
Um, and then what I uh, also um, like very much is are these questions about foresight. Uh, what will we need in in five years or in ten years or in or, or beyond that? Whether it's with new technologies coming up and the skills that 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 um, you will need or the systems that might be completely different, or who knows? Indeed, uh, other indicators and measurements uh, that, that we will need to look at. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, and Anir, uh, let's go back to you for one or two final uh, messages that you would like to pass. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, uh, again, I'll go back to the equality report that we published for Bangladesh. I think that uh, that report has given us a deeper insight uh, to the issue of uh, universal and meaningful connectivity. And uh, connected to that, skills development and service design are two issues that have come up. So connectivity is important, but to make sure that connectivity is meaningful, uh, we have to make sure there are other issues in terms of skills and service design. So those have come up. And we're now working on the issue of an equality index. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough issue right now because there are seven different areas that we are actually exploring in terms of how the meaningful connectivity serves us in education, in healthcare, in uh, employment, uh, in uh, CMSM issues, the cottage micro enterprise issues, uh, in the issues of public service delivery. So those are the about seven areas that we're looking at. And uh, we hope that this equality index will give us a much deeper understanding, uh, both with data, quantitative or qualitative data, uh, to give us uh, a deeper uh, understanding of the UMC issues and also take us forward. And I really like the issue of uh, the strategic insight, looking at strategic insight, what will be needed in the next five years or even 10 years when uh, we'll have not just humans uh, exchanging data uh, amongst, amongst each other through systems and social media, but we'll have a lot of devices and perhaps even robots working in different fields uh, in, in farms, in factories, perhaps even offices, uh, also sharing data as well. So that's the future that we're really looking at, maybe 10 years down the road, maybe even five years down the road. So looking at that future, painting the pictures of alternative futures with strategic insight, I think could be really valuable as well. So I really appreciate that issue uh, being brought up in today's discussion. So very rich discussion uh, to all participants. Thank you, my gratitude, and uh, Dennis, uh, Thank you for the moderation, really useful. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Anir. I, I'll turn to ITU now. I hope uh, ITU also thinks the same way. Uh, yes, uh, we're out of time, so I only want to say that, that uh, the, the final remarks and, and the whole session, uh, I can only echo them, and, and, and that what we're doing with our project, you know, promoting and measuring universal and meaningful connectivity is, is spot on and important and, uh, and timely, so we will work very hard. And, continue the product. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. I mean, I, I will not sum <laughs> attempt to summarize the discussion, but there is a lot said today from from different countries, uh, and, and there's so much uh, insight. I think the discussion will and has to uh, continue. Uh, with this, we came to the end of our uh, uh, session. Uh, I hope uh, it was useful for all and I hope it will be watched uh, online uh, with others in the future and thank you to everyone and also thank you to our online moderator uh, Mr. Uh, Thierry Geiger so thank you <laughs>